ఒక ప్రార్థన చేసుకొని కలిసి దేవుణ్ణి ఆరాధిద్దాము ప్రార్థన ఓన్లీ గ్రేషియస్ లాడ్ ఫాదర్ ఐ ఫ్రే ఇన్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ జీసస్ ఫాదర్ అల్పస్ మై లాడ్ టు సింగ్ ఇన్ వన్ అకౌడ్ glorify your name yes my father whatever we do in this world in this, in this under this roof my father may each and everything glorify your name lord father thank you for this opportunity that we are gathered together in your name my lord in hunger to receive your love through word help us my father open our eyes and ears and heart my father to receive it clearly and never forget we thank you my father lord i pray for people who are joined online who are here in person and my lord who are on the way please my father lord people who are on the way my lord bring them safely and my lord open ears and heart of uh, the people who are here in person and and watching us online bless each one of us my father help us to receive it and my lord as we go outside leaving this place help us not to go empty handed thank you my father i pray in the name of jesus amen randi yehova nu gurchi utsaha ganam cheyedumu chesedumu ఆయనే మన పోషకుడు నమ్మదగిన దేవుడని ఈ పాట పాడి కలిసి దేవుని ఆరాధిద్దామండి దయచేసి అందరు నుంచుంటైతే చప్పట్లతో సంతోషంతో ఈ ఆరాధన చేసుకుందాం
వెనకు ఉన్న వాళ్ళు ఈ ఫస్ట్ టూ రోజు వదిలేసి కొంచెం ముందు రావాలని రిక్వెస్ట్ చేస్తానండి ఎందుకంటే ఈ రోజు ఇన్ పర్సన్ స్పీకర్ ఉన్నారు కాబట్టి ఇంత దూరం ఉంటే మనం స్పీకర్కి రెస్పెక్ట్ ఇవ్వాలి సో ప్లీజ్ కమ్ కార్నర్స్లో కూర్చున్న వాళ్ళు కూడా మిడిల్ మిడిల్ రోకి వచ్చేయాలి కార్నర్స్లో ఆ సైడ్ ఈ సైడ్ ఎవరైతే ఉన్నారో వాళ్ళు కూడా మిడిల్ మిడిల్ రోకి వచ్చేయాలి కొంచెం ముందుకు వచ్చేయండి 
ఒకవేళ పిల్లల్ని చూసుకోవాలి అంటే ఇట్స్ ఓకే టు బీ ఇన్ ద లాస్ట్ రో బట్ థ్యాంక్ యూ అండి అలాగే అల్లె లూయ పాడేదా ప్రభు నిన్ను కొని ఆడేదన్ అని పాట పాడి దేవుని స్థుతిద్దాం జీ 
ಪ್ರಭು ನಿನ್ನು ಕೊನೆಯಾಡೇದ ಹಲ್ಲೇಲುಯ ಪಾಡೇದ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿನ್ನು ಕೊನೆಯಾಡೇದ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಯೇಸುನೀಕೆ ನೀ ಚಿತ್ತಂನೇ ಚೇಸೆದ ನೀ ಮಾರ್ಗಂಲೋನೆ ನಡಚೇದ ನೀ ಸನ್ನಿಧಿಲೋನೆ ನಿಲ್ಚೇದ ನಿನ್ನ ವೆಂಬಡಿಂಚೇದ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಯೇಸುನೀಕೆ ಈ ಪಾಠ ಬಾಡಿ ದೇವಣ್ಣೆ ಸ್ತುತಿದ್ದಾಮು ಕಲಸಿ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಆತ್ಮತ್ವ ಅಂಡಿ ವಿ ಈಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಜನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಲವ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ and that is why he came as a human not as a god on this earth to say that it is possible and it is possible for each one of us through him so let's sing it together in one accord
నిలిపించేదా నిన్ను వెంబడించేదా నీ చిత్తము నీ చేసేదా నీ మార్గములో నీ నడిచేదా నీ సన్నిధిలో నీ నిలిచేదా నిన్ను వెంబడించేదా help us lead us may allow help us to receive your word as we prepare ourselves my father we are all looking unto you to receive it my lord father there are so many here with desire heart my father with hunger lord father speak to us through word my father bless my father the speaker who is sharing with who sharing the word with us my lord use him my lord speak through him my lord and without any judgment help us to receive it completely through the holy spirit lord may your holy spirit guide us my lord help us my lord to grow with uh, your word my lord always pray in the name of jesus amen amen dai chesko chundi uh I, we were upstairs working on some sound issues we are getting very much in sync as a church and so uh even our sound systems are becoming one <laughs> which is not always the best approach to things psalm 32 this is a psalm of david it's one that i have been meditating on um really a lot during the season of lent uh and especially during holy week and it's sort of been a part of the good friday service as well as it, i i referenced it again on easter sunday um during the english service but this is what david writes blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long for day and night your hand was heavy upon me my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer I acknowledged my sin before you and i did not cover my iniquity i said i will confess my transgressions to the lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin therefore 
Let everyone who is godly offer prayers to you at a time when you may be found. Surely the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be cured, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. This is God's word. This is a psalm that will often lead me into a season of confession of sin, where I have done things that I am not proud of, or when I uh, you know, just need to bring things to the Lord that I've, I've kind of kept quiet. The psalm begins, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Notice that David doesn't say, blessed is the one who has never committed sin. <laughs> Good luck finding that person, right? We, we know that there is one person who that applies to, and that's Jesus Christ. And he is also blessed for a whole other set of reasons. But David writes, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's good news for you and for me. It's not saying we are sinless. It's saying that the sin that we commit is covered. And because of that, we're blessed. That's really good news. And the verse 2 sort of echoes that same idea. Blessed is the, is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. What he's saying there here is, uh, in whose spirit there is no deceit. That basically means not that we haven't not that we haven't been deceitful, but rather that we are openly confessing our iniquity and our sin to the Lord. And so we're not trying to hide things up. We don't, you know. The psalmist kind of goes on, but but the reality is this: so the um, blessed is the one uh, against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. And so, uh, if our sins have been covered, what happens to our sin? What happens to our iniquity? It's dealt with. It's gone. It's wiped off. It's wiped away. And so what happens to the sins that we don't confess to the Lord? What happens to the things that we, that we have done that we try to hide and conceal from God? Where do those go? Those remain. And this is not saying that we have to kind of list every sin that we've ever committed. Jesus knows our hearts, right? And so we go to God openly and we confess and we let Jesus sort of expose our own brokenness and sin. In John 3, he talks about those who walk in the darkness like the darkness because they stay hidden. Their evil deeds remain quiet and hidden. But in prayer... We start, we start confessing our sin to the Lord, and then Jesus, in his own little way, says, well, remember this? And remember that? You want me to deal with this, but what about this? Will you let him? Will you let the Lord deal with that brokenness and iniquity that you uh, may have overlooked or maybe thought, Did I, I didn't even know that was wrong. And the, Jesus exposes that and, and, we, and brings that to light, and so we confess that too. So we don't need to be angry. We don't need to be can, fearful of that. We, this is Jesus' way of working out those things so that he can deal with our brokenness, deal with our sin, because when we confess our sin, we need not fear because it is simply letting Jesus deal with our sin. That's prayer. It's letting Jesus go to work in our hearts and our lives, exposing the things that need to be brought to light so he can deal with it. It's not always fun, not always pleasant. It's, it's, it's sometimes, uh, sometimes very shameful. And there, there's guilt that goes with that. And yet, the, this is where that psalm needs to come back again. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven. So while we are not proud of our sin, while we, and nor should we be, we also, when we let the Lord deal with it, we trust that he deals with it, and then that's it. There are some times when we need to go to our brother or sister in Christ, go to the, or or not, or, or just our, just someone that we have wronged, whether they're a believer or not, and confess our sin to them. I have wronged you. I'm sorry. 
And so there are some times where God is simply saying, yes, you confess to me, but also now go to that person and be reconciled. Those are good things too. Not easy times, but they're good times. They're, they're, it's good to do. Verse 3 goes on, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, though my groaning all day, through, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up by the heat of summer. We know something about the heat of summer in, in Dallas. Right? It was, it was 100 degrees, 108 degrees, 110 degrees, a long time this summer. That's a lot for us, a lot for me. And that's the description that David gives when we don't confess our sin. When we try to go on like, oh, it's no problem. It's no big deal. God understands. This isn't that big of a deal. I don't need to confess this sin to the Lord. When we don't confess, when we try to keep our, when we let our pride sort of lead the way and not, and not let ourselves be open to the Lord, that's when guilt starts wearing at us. That's when, that's when the God's heavy hand is, is put upon us. We try to act like there's no big deal, and yet it, 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 it doesn't go away. And suddenly now we carry that weight, that burden, that guilt, that shame, that, that, that brokenness. We carry that. And ultimately, what Jesus is saying in that season of our carrying, in that season of heat that we are wasting away, he's saying, why are you carrying this? Why are you holding on to this? Why, why, why don't you just confess it? Let me deal with it. So oftentimes, I want to I want to make things right myself. And uh, again, there are times there are, we are called to sort of see, be reconciled to those that we have wronged. But not only have we been not only have we wronged the other person, we, we apologize to that person, but we also have wronged the Lord in that. And so we confess those things to the Lord and say, God, I need you to deal with this. If you don't deal with it, I'm gonna have to carry this. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. In verse 5, I acknowledged my sin to you. I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. When God finally breaks through and we uh, finally let our pride go, and say, I can't do this on my own. I cannot live this holy life the way God's word commands me to. I, I, I can't do it by my strength. I can't, and I've tried and I've tried, I've tried to, to try to please God through my own efforts. And God says, you can't. That's, that's earning glory for yourself, not letting my glory bear upon you. And so, yes, we're called to, to, to follow Jesus. We're, we're, not, we're, we're not called to sin, but we're also not called to live by our own strength, by our own efforts. We are simply called to follow Jesus instead of going our own way. When we go our own way, when we, when we, when we succumb to temptation like that, God says, confess it. And when we confess it, it's, a bit, it's difficult, it's shameful, it's hard. And yet, what does God say to us? When I acknowledge my sin to you, I don't cover my sin. I'll confess my transgressions to the Lord. And what happened? You forgave me. You forgave the iniquity of my sin. You forgave the iniquity of my sin. How do we know that our sin has been forgiven? How do we know? We look to the cross. Jesus Christ went to the cross. He takes your sin upon himself. When you confess your sin, God no longer holds you accountable to your sin. He holds his son accountable for your sin. And the great exchange then is we get Christ's righteousness. You get the righteousness that Christ earned to the cross. Christ lived the perfect, obedient life. And at the cross, he offers you his righteousness, his perfection, and he takes your sin away. And so now... When you have been covered, when your sin has been covered, you've been covered by the righteousness of Christ. And so God the Father no longer looks at you and sees you and your sin. He sees his son covering you. That's awesome. That is forgiveness. And so now we know that our sin has been forgiven because it has been dealt with by Jesus on the cross. He has paid the price for our sin. Okay. We get that part. But is it really covered? Are we really, do we really get eternal life? Is it, has, it, has Jesus done enough? 
How do we know? That's what Easter's about, right? Jesus did not stay dead. He was raised on the third day, and he lives. And he declares that the death that sin that comes from sin has been dealt with. It is done. It has been defeated. And so we don't need to worry. Is our sin dealt with? Jesus says, yes, it's been dealt with. It's done. Now live the life that I have given to you. Follow me into eternity. That's awesome. And so we follow Jesus. We don't have to wait to follow Jesus uh, until we, we don't, we don't have to, we don't have to, Wait until we die to start following Jesus in eternity. Jesus is alive today, and so we start following him today. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that leads us to follow him. And so we begin living the life eternal that we, we have been given by Jesus Christ. We start living that today. Yes, our sinful nature still clings to us, but we don't give it any strength. We don't give it any power. Instead, we turn and we follow Jesus and say, Jesus, you're Lord over all of this. Take it. Lead me. Let me trust your word in these things. And so we allow, allow the Holy Spirit to teach us to follow Jesus more closely. And so we walk in obedience to Jesus Christ. And then sometimes we don't. Sometimes we find ourselves following our own temptations and going our own way again. And the Holy Spirit says, ah, 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 you're doing it again. And we are brought back into confession. We go to God in prayer. and We let God again lead us back to him. And the whole kind of idea of justification and sanctification, those are, those are big, fancy, churchy words. Um, but uh, the process of God looking at you and seeing Jesus, that's justification. It's done. Your salvation has been accomplished. It's done. There's nothing you can do about it. But we don't feel like it's done. Right? We still feel like there's sin clinging to us. We still feel like we're not good enough. And the reality is this. You are good enough, not because you're trying harder, but because Jesus' work is fully done. It's finished. It, it, it can't be, you can't add anything to what Jesus has already done for you. But the Holy Spirit is at work in you, and the Holy Spirit is then what is sanctifying you. That's the process by which our lives begin to reflect the 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 life that, Jesus, that God sees in eternity. And so the whole idea, the journey with Jesus is that the things that, that were, were entangling us become less entangly. They, let, they become less hard. They, they, we, we, the journey, we, 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 as we walk and follow Jesus, the things that we, we, we were once here, and maybe we get to here. And so the things we were dealing with here, we're dealing with them here, but less so. And then we get more and more down the road. That's the, that's the process of sanctification. That's the Holy Spirit at work bringing about the life of Jesus in us so that when we die and, and, and are in heaven, we are made perfect at that point. That process actually begins now. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. And so that's when, when the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin and leads us to follow Jesus. That's the process of sanctification. And so the process of prayer is that we let, our, we let God say, we, we, we confess our sin to the Lord, and we don't hide anything from him because we, we trust him. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. And so what do we do? What, what is he talking about here? Let, let everyone who is godly, who is that? That's us. Suddenly now we, we go from people who are transgressing sin to the godly. What makes us godly? Well, our sin has been covered. We have been, we have been covered by the blood of Jesus. And so we offer a prayer at a time when God may be found. When is that? Well, all the time. God doesn't hide from us. He doesn't, he doesn't d distance himself. He's always close. The Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. And so go to God in prayer. Surely... Uh, Time we found surely in the rush of the waters they shall not reach him. The, no trouble will come upon the Lord. He he won't ever find himself in trouble to say, "Oh wait, I can't deal with you right now. I got my own problems to deal with." Nope, God doesn't do that. Instead, David writes, "You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance." And so our strength, our holiness, our righteousness is not found in us. It is found in the Lord who says, trust me, depend upon me, lean on me. You are a hiding place for me. Hide yourself in Christ. Hide yourself in what he has done for you. Hide yourself. 
when times of trouble come upon you, when you, when you feel temptation rising up, when you find yourself going down a, a road that will lead to sin, stop. Confess it to the Lord and say, God, I don't want to go down this road. Lead, save me from myself, and he will. Scripture reminds us that God does not lead us into a temptation that is too strong for us. Instead, ultimately, it's, it's never too strong for him, right? And so we rely upon God's strength in this. And so he, David goes on, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And so are we going to get it perfect? Are we going to get it right? No. So a quick story. I coach my daughter's softball team. My daughter, Kara, she's 10. Some of you know her. I coach her softball team. And there are some times when Kara doesn't want to listen to her coach. Okay? I try to instruct her. I try to teach her in the ways she should go. But yet, sometimes she is like a horse or a mule <laughs> with, who just doesn't want to listen, right? Um, uh, without understanding. I'm not calling my, my daughter a horse or a mule, but you get the idea. There are some times where she just does not want to be taught that she has to sort of learn on her own, learn the hard way. And as much as I want to help her in this way, and so then she'll make a mistake and say, I, why, what happened? And I say, are you ready to listen? And she'll say, yes. And now she's at a place where she can listen again. Rather than learning the hard way where she's kind of go through the school of hard knocks, she's willing to let her coach, her father, teach her the way she should go, how you should handle this, the situation when it comes up. Right? That's what, he's, that's what the Lord is talking about. So God is saying to us, don't be, don't be stubborn. Don't be mule-headed. Right? Uh, there are times where you, you, it, it, it's better for you um, where you don't have to have a bridle putting you to lead you one way or another. To, you know, that's, what, that's what a bridle does for a horse. It turns it one way or the other. Uh, ultimately, what God wants is simply to call and you follow. And so when you, how do we do that? We listen to his voice. We, 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 we spend time with the Lord. We, we, we pray to the Lord. And we, we, have, we have open communication. And so we let God lead us. And so that's what prayer is. He hears us. And calls us, many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. Who are the wicked? They're the ones, they're, they're the ones who aren't confessing. They're the ones who are going their own way, who are thinking that their life is just fine the way it is. But steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Our job is not to act like we have it all together, not to be so prideful and arrogant to say that we are righteous and holy and perfect. No. We are people who know our condition, and we know the one we can turn to for forgiveness and for new life. And so we trust him. And so we obey his commands, not to show off how righteous we are, but actually to demonstrate our dependence and our need for the Lord. That's the spirit that God wants for his people. That is the life of prayer. And so be glad in the Lord. And rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. And so I love this. It starts in praise and it ends in praise. But it's not like, hey, we're, um, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous. Who are the righteous? It's you. It's me. Again, go back to the beginning of this. Uh, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven. That's the righteous one. We can be pronounced righteous because we have received the righteousness of Christ. Again, we are, we, are, we are not righteous of ourselves. We receive the righteousness that comes from Christ. And so blessed is the one we can rejoice in the Lord as righteous people because we're not trying to live by our own righteousness. We are living by Christ and his righteousness, letting him lead us where we should go. And so we follow, we trust, and we do it together. And so that is what enables us then to love others as he loved us. We don't try to put ourselves above other people. We don't try to make ourselves better than other people. Instead, we are sinners who have been saved by grace. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And so we pray not to show off how righteous we are, but actually to live in dependence and need and love of him. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we shout for joy. We who are upright in heart, not because we are upright and righteous for ourselves, but because you, O oh Lord, are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. And so, Lord, we can, can, we can openly confess our sin to you. God, we live in a world that is uh, 
It just feels pressure to get it right, to, um, to not make mistakes, to not admit failure, to not show weakness. And yet you say to us, that's exactly what you want from us, to admit that we are poor in spirit, to admit that we don't have it all together, that as hard as we try to do things ourselves in the right way, we always seem to mess it up. And so, Lord, we openly confess our sin to you, that we have tried to be king of our own lives, ruler of our, of our own lives, rather than about living under your rule, under your reign as our true king. And so, God, even now, hear us as we confess our sin to you. A life of a disciple of Jesus Christ does not see the cross get smaller and smaller because we need it less. The life of a disciple sees the cross get bigger and bigger because we realize just how much we need the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The closer we walk with you, the more your miracle of salvation is apparent to us, is real to us. So, Lord, we stand in awe that you forgave us. We rejoice, O Lord, that you are our hiding place. That we need not fear any evil that would come upon us, that we need not fear any, any wickedness that would seek to entangle us. Lord, hem us in from behind and before. Lead us not in temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Let us not act as though we are powerful enough to stand on our own in the presence of that evil. Rather, we need to stand in your, in your shelter, in your refuge, in your strength. Because you confronted the most wicked and evil this world has ever produced, and you defeated it at the cross and the empty tomb. And so, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to walk with you. God, I ask that you would remind us of who we are in your eyes, that we are not loathsome, grievous, sinful people, but we are righteous and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So let us live as people, not, uh, not with guilt and shame for needing your cross, but just in the delight of your love that has redeemed us. Thank you, Lord. Let us be people who know what it is to live in the light of your love. Let us invite others to live in that light as well. We pray these things and we rejoice, O oh Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.